Have you ever wondered where water comes from? About 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water and the oceans hold about 96.5% of all Earth's water. Water also exists in the air, in rivers and lakes, in ice caps and glaciers, and underground amongst other places. Water is important to life, including plants, animals, and humans. All water travels through an impressive path called the water cycle. The water cycle is the continuous movement of water through the earth and into the atmosphere. This movement does not stop. In this cycle, the water changes forms too. These different forms are liquid, gas, and solid. When water heats up through the help of the sun or other heat sources, water changes from a liquid to an invisible gas becoming water vapor. The change allows water vapor to rise up into the air and travel upwards. This is called evaporation. Connected to this stage is also transpiration, which is the release of water vapor by plants through their leaves. This water vapor also evaporates into the air alongside other water vapor. As water vapor continues moving up into the atmosphere, it reaches cooler temperatures and turns back from a gas into a liquid. This is called condensation. Water here is now made up of tiny liquid water droplets. This condensation mixes with gases and dust particles to become clouds. Once these clouds get heavy enough, the water is released from them in the form of rain, snow, hail, or sleet. This is called precipitation. This precipitation moves into streams, rivers, lakes, oceans, becomes surface runoff, or water that travels over land surfaces such as streets or hills, and seeps underground as groundwater too. From here, the cycle begins all over again. Do know there are other specific elements to the water cycle. However, these are some of the main ones. Did you know that air pollution impacts the quality of our water? Acid rain is a clear example of that. Acid rain is rain, or any other type of precipitation, that is highly acidic, containing high levels of nitric and sulfuric acids. How does this happen? One way is through natural occurrences such as volcanic activity and rotting vegetation. Both of these release these chemicals. However, the presence of these chemicals in the air are mainly due to human activities such as the burning of fossil fuels, smoke from vehicles, and chemicals released from factories. These activities create tons of pollution in our air which creates acid rain. When these human activities release nitrogen oxide and sulfur dioxide into the atmosphere, they traveled by wind and air. They then react with water, oxygen, and other chemicals during the condensation stage to form nitric and sulfuric acids. Then they fall back down during the precipitation stage as acid rain. These chemicals lower the acidity of rain. Let's get into what acidity is and why that even matters. The pH scale is a measuring system used to identify how acidic or basic a substance is. Pure water is considered neutral and is a 7 on the pH scale. Anything below 7 is considered acidic and anything above 7 is considered basic, sometimes referred to as alkaline. The acidity of water is very important to take notice of because when water becomes too acidic, it starts to affect the environment, especially aquatic animals and plants that depend on clean water to live. For example, fish cannot survive if water is below 4 or above 10 on the pH scale. In addition, acid rain also damages plants and trees and make it difficult for plants to consume water due to the high acidity of the water. 
Plants and animals can become sick and die due to acidic water with low pH levels. The acidity of water can also affect bodies of water that support organisms living within and can destroy food chains that different ecosystems depend on. So even if it doesn't kill certain animals, their food source can be eliminated, affecting their survival. For example, frogs eat mayflies as one of their food sources. Mayflies are not able to survive in water that is below 5.5 in the pH scale. Even though frogs can live in waters that are a bit more acidic than flies, because flies can't, means this food source would no longer be available to frogs. This affects the survival of frogs and the ecosystem, since it can cause them to leave the area or possibly die. The gases causing air pollution and contributing to acid rain can also affect human health. When we breathe in these chemicals in the air, they enter our lungs and can create illness or contribute to existing lung issues such as asthma and bronchitis. There are personal actions we can take to help reduce air pollution and improve air quality. Instead of using a personal vehicle to get somewhere, we can walk, ride a bike, or take public transportation. We can make sure to turn off lights and other devices that use electricity when we are not using them. Spreading knowledge is powerful too. Talk to your friends and family about air pollution, the water cycle, and acid rain to get them informed on this important topic. Water is very important to sustaining life and is much more than a glass of water. Water goes through a never-ending cycle called the water cycle. It has a relationship with air pollution, how it travels, and the creation of acid rain. What are other ways that you can help reduce air pollution?